So welcome to our first livestock uh, episode here with Dr. Carver, sponsored by the University of Tennessee Beef and Forage Center. I'm the host, Bruno Pedreira, director of the UT Beef and Forage Center, and also the UT Extension Specialist. And I have here with me Dr. Katie Mason, UT Extension Beef Specialist, and Dr. Troy Roman, UT Beef Cattle, beef genetic as a specialist, yes, right? True. We are very, very glad to be here today to our inaugural live stream and very excited to have Dr. Keith Carver with us, Senior Vice Chancellor and Senior Vice President of the University of Tennessee Institute of Agriculture. Thank you. P pleasure to be here. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Dr. Carver, let, let's start with a little bit about you. Okay. That's that's our, you know, you have been in the role for a while, but you have been at, in, with the UT system for more than 26 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Executive assistant to the president, Joe Pietro, for six years, by, uh, interim vice chancellor uh, at Health Science, Sciences Center in Memphis, assistant vice chancellor for development at UT Martin, director of development and alumni affairs for the UT College of Law in Moxville. Mm -hmm. that, that's a long time on the road. It, it's a long time. Uh, when you list it like that, it makes me seem like I can't keep a job. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, and more important than that, you 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 were raised in a rural farming community in Tennessee, right? I was. I so was. I think the first thing we wanted from you today is, could you share your personal journey that led you to embrace agriculture and that brought you here today? You bet. Uh, so I, I was, uh, and first, thanks for having me on the show. I think this is a fantastic opportunity to, to spread awareness, education, but also advocate um, and, and really appreciate the opportunity to be here. Um, I'll, I'll say that um, where I was raised, I was raised in a very rural agrarian area in Tennessee, Crockett County. Um, I think Crockett County has the distinction of still being the only county in Tennessee without a stoplight. So pretty small <laughs> place. Uh, I was raised in a multi-generational household. So uh, my grandparents uh, we lived next door to my grandparents. Uh, they owned a country store in uh, Frog Jump, Tennessee, which is uh, which is western Crockett County. Um, but uh, Frog Jump's about 400 people. It's all agrarian, uh, and my grandparents owned the country store, Frog Jump Grocery there. My mother and I lived in a one-bedroom efficiency apartment, uh, about 900 square feet behind the meat department of the store. And my grandparents, we were not in agriculture per se as producers, but we were in ag business. I mean, we had, uh, we had, there were groceries. Um, we did, we did butchering. Uh, we cooked two meals a day. Um, um, Monday, the only days we did not provide food as a local restaurant was on, was on Sunday. Uh, we did grocery deliveries. We had a little bit of um, a feed in case someone got an emergency and couldn't run in town to the co-op. We kept some there. And, uh, but it was in the center of this huge uh, cotton farm on Highway 88. It was the only business there in the community. So it was uh, served as a postal office, a little bit of everything, but growing up there and, and, and taking care of the farms and the farming families was a, a great introduction to agriculture. That's great. That's great. Um, and and what, what kind of motivates you to contribute to the agriculture sector in Tennessee? You know, I, I think growing up and, and just seeing how hard and industrious our farmers are, uh, but also to see how hard it is to farm. I mean, when you look at uh, the age of Tennessee's farm, it's, it's, it's creeping up. It's mm -hmm. in the 60s now, mm -hmm. and uh, our average age of farmer, uh, we've got um, more people to feed on less land and, and less timber than ever before. And when I think about this is year 28 for me at UT, it's the first time uh, I've been in a situation to work on something that's so centrally focused on something. It's mm -hmm. education. Uh, but it's all about um, promoting safe, accessible, healthy, affordable food, mm -hmm. fiber, uh, and, and, and well-being for families and, and animals uh, in the state of Tennessee. And uh, to me, that's easy to get out of bed for every morning, and it's really exciting. That's great. Very good. That, that's great to hear. We're happy to have you back in the ag sector, of course. We're, um, we're excited to, to hear more from you. And I, I want to talk a little bit about the presence that UT has across the state. So um, we have a presence in all 95 counties and 
through our missions of, of research and extension and, and teaching, we reach students and we reach businesses and governments and organizations. Um, could you tell us a little bit about how UTIA plays a crucial role in serving Tennessee, but also outside of our borders um, in other states? Absolutely. It's a fantastic question. When you think about it, uh, we, we it, our state looks like a big, long, skinny slab of wood, right? Mm -hmm. 95 counties and you know, from Bristol to Memphis is about a seven hour drive. And, and it's so it's a lot of uh, politically very diverse as you cross the state. But also when you look at, at crops and agriculture, and, mm -hmm. um, dairy, and that's exactly <laughs> right. Uh, very, very different. Uh, but the one common thread throughout every county is UT. And those extension offices being in all 95 counties. Uh, and by the way, uh, so thankful for state government two years ago for giving us money for 32 new extension agents to be mm -hmm. hired, especially in those distressed counties. But for those counties, I grew up in one. Um, I learned, now this is going to show my age, guys, but, <laughs> but I, I remember in, in fourth grade learning how to balance a checkbook from my extension agent. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was personal finance in, in my elementary school. Uh, that takes now, if I were to talk to my kids about that, they'd say checkbook, you know, but, but what's really, a checkbook? <laughs> uh, those are the types. Uh, services that we're providing and if people have questions about their crop or their animals and or, or their fish or or the newborn baby uh they've got and now uh, even looking at, at farm help you know, farmers health and wellness and stress levels uh it's a one-stop shop and and in those communities uh, especially those distressed ones people just have, don't know where to go but they know their extension agent and they know it's a friendly face and if they don't have this provide the service or nobody, they'll find out who to contact. And it just really uh, creates this this orange network uh, across the state of, of helping people. And it's it's so valuable. And, and, I, and there are a lot of models for extension and ag research. Uh, I really love the county based model because it, it, each county is a little different. And uh, I think you get the best service of our citizens. But we take those and then like now um, you talk about going across the borders, uh, the things that we're doing uh, through uh, ag research and, and economics through Center for Farm Management uh, that we're doing on land loss right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're really the first state in the country to really come out, connect all these property assessors, courthouses, and figure out what's being farmed, what's being sold, who's buying it, what's being repurposed for. Well, when you think of what Dr. Martinez and his colleagues are doing in that space, you know, now Mississippi is interested in that, mm -hmm. now Alabama, and, it's, and, and let's share that information so people can get a good idea. How much farmland are we losing? And, and I think that's what we need to be doing is looking for areas where we, where we leave. Um, and, and finally, um, the Smith Center for uh, uh, global, global, global Studies, taking sustainable agriculture practices all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, I just got back from 10 days in Cambodia and went over there and we were working with uh, these uh, faculty students who were working with these farmers on, you know, drought resistant techniques for row cropping and, mm -hmm. and again, their use of, of plants as a, as a pesticide and, and insect repellent. And, you know, I think our students went thinking, okay, we're going to show these folks what's going on. But the truth was we learned a lot uh, from our Cambodian friends because, boy, they're dealing with tough mm -hmm. conditions. Mm -hmm. Tough environment. Yes. And, and they're so industrious and smart. And, and so I think it helps our students and our faculty become better. Uh, when they come back and bring some of those practices home. So it's an eye opener. So it is all about Tennessee, but if we can share um, with other states and, and other countries, I think that's a wonderful thing. And learn from them as well, right? Oh, absolutely. It's always an amazing experience to be international. I can tell, I can tell about it. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah, so, so Keith, I guess you've you've been here about a, a little months. over, a little, Let almost a year, months. right? A year. So the... The honeymoon phase is um, is is almost over, or maybe it's never over, I think right? I think it ended you think long. it ended? Yeah, yeah, there you go. But but I guess as you've as you've sort of sat down and you've been able to evaluate where we're at at UTIA, um, we're going through a strategic planning process. Um, what are the big the big priorities for for you UTIA um, and how we interact with with folks across the state? What do you think our our biggest priorities are going to be as we we look forward and in, into the future? You bet. And you know we're about 
80% through the strategic planning process. And, and thank you for your engagement in that, in that process. Oh, it's been a blast. It's been a yeah. <laughs> but uh, I think for me, we're doing a lot of really good things, but, but where can we be great? And, yeah. and where can we deploy resources to take um, what we're doing now and amplify so that we could be, we could be leaders yeah. and uh, a couple of areas, you know, in, in terms of research and, and, and what we're adding to, um, to academic discipline, uh, you look at precision livestock farming. Absolutely. And, and that is an area with the talent we have here. And we have an incredibly talented group of faculty and researchers. <laughs> um, we have a chance to be the best in the country. I already think that we're doing cutting edge stuff, but, what could you imagine if we deployed more resources in that and we're working with the state of Tennessee to try to get more resources? Right. Um, and I think that's the biggest part of my job is to help get resources from mm -hmm. the state and from, from private uh, companies and individuals. But but we could be a world leader there. You look at what we're doing right now, in, uh, and, and precision livestock involves so many, precision farming mm -hmm. involves right. so many so many areas. Uh, when you look at what we're doing right now in, in turf grass management and plant mm -hmm. sciences, you know, uh, I don't know if our listeners, you all know this, but in 2026, FIFA will be, World Cup will be in North America and 16 stadiums and UT uh, in, in conjunction with some colleagues at Michigan State, uh, we're going to develop the turf grass, same grass mm -hmm. in all 16 stadium so if you're playing in if you're playing in seattle washington in an outdoor stadium and you're playing indoors in atlanta georgia how do you grow the same grass mm -hmm. the same length same texture and, and all that's being done here and, and and we need to be we need to be talking about these things i think too um we have some real opportunities um in forestry with the the, the, the forest that we have here great smoky mountains on this side and the ames research center on mm -hmm. the west side uh, what we could be doing there to collaborate. Uh, and also, um, when you look at programs like 4-H, and, yeah. um, it is considered uh, one of the leading youth development programs in the country. And when you look, we had 132 students register for 4-H events last week, last year. And so last week, yeah, we had a, mm -hmm. that, that would be really good. But mm -hmm. but had a, I don't, actually, I don't think we can handle that. But <laughs> 100, 132,000 yeah. students active in a 4-H program last, wow. last year. And, and so um, when you think about, they're learning about government, they're learning public speaking, they're learning soft skills, they're learning um, how to not just present and speak, but, you know, there's you know how to show cattle and mm -hmm. there's some theater involved in that. And maybe even how to balance a checkbook. And right? balance a checkbook. <laughs> That's right. That's right. What's a checkbook? What's what a checkbook? Yeah. But, but true. But, but I mean, that is an opportunity where we have the largest program and I think, I think it's the best, but we need to develop uh, we need to push it more and make those 4-H centers uh, world class so that uh, we are the model for that. So and those are just four uh, of, of so many other areas we could talk about. But but I'm excited. And I think my role in this is uh, to kick off that strategic program, planning program, and then get out of get out of the way and let it develop through our content experts across the state and then let's take it and and my job is to go out and find resources and promote and advocate and um and i'm excited about that you bet and that's good that's good yeah. and 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 speaking of you know finding resources and, and and find things to be done here right tennessee and we are here speaking on the beef and forest center Right? That's mm -hmm. what we are talking about today here. Uh, we, we love beef. We love <laughs> beef. Me too. <laughs> and we we have a, a cattle calf inventory in the state that said we have we have almost 1.7 million head of cow, and 1.7 million acres of hay as well. So it's it's a great industry, right? Mm -hmm. According to the the TDA annual report, the cash and recipients are one one fifty six million dollars in hay That's and five hundred and forty eight million dollars in livestock. What in what ways do you envision us faculty and in an extension UT people and also actually going through the beef and forage center to to impact their you know these farmers' life? How what what can you tell us that you would like to see us doing and where we are going? Well, you guys didn't know I was going to pay you a compliment today, but but I, <laughs> but, I, but, I, but I need to pay you a compliment. Um, I, I work with um, all the constituency groups and commodity groups across the state. And, and what I can tell you, uh, whether I'm with uh, Tennessee Cattlemen's or, or whether I'm even talking to the folks at the uh, uh, National Cattlemen's 
Beef Association. Um, they are so impressed with the, the research you guys are doing, but also how quickly you disseminate the information to uh, the producers. And, and so uh, fr from how I would phrase it is from the lab in the field, to the producers and it's almost seamless and, and um, our, our farmers, um, our educators feel so comfortable reaching out. Uh, our team um, is your team. Our team is incredibly responsive. So I would say the beef and forage center is uh, an example of a best practice of, Hey, we do this great research, but we don't do research here for research sake. We do research so we can make farming more effective and efficient take better care of livestock, make them healthier, feed them healthier food. And you all do a fantastic job of that. And I, and I hear that all across the state. Excellent. That's what we have been trying to do here, right? And, mm -hmm. and, and by the way, we are just working right now to try to expand our variety trials. So mm -hmm. we should be able to have more different species and different varieties tested throughout the state. So that's that's our 2024, 2025 plan. Absolutely. That, that's great. When you're not podcasting, you're going to be variety testing, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Or you could be variety testing while you're podcasting. Okay. Uh, that would be good. Be good. Do Multitasking. From the field. Yeah. 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 That'd be great. Yeah, yeah. No, that's good. Very good. So. I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about um, students. So mm -hmm. I, I love to see your interactions with students. I can tell that that you genuinely enjoy it too. And so um, the UT system provides an accessible and affordable education to so many students um, and uh, across the state um, at different campuses. And so we have about 54,000 students enrolled, 13,000 new graduates every year. Mm -hmm. And when we think about alumni, um, 445,000 alumni across the state nation and world. And so that's a, a huge deal um, as far as our educational, you know, outreach goes. And so um, what strategies do you think are essential in preparing that next generation to be successful in the livestock or the ag sector? It's a, it's a great question because you look about, and, and if you look at our next decade, uh, that number of folks actually farming, producing food, that's going to continue to, to, to shrink. And uh, I think we've talked about it uh, quite a bit uh, with, you know, Tennessee Farm Bureau, um, with with the Tennessee Department of Agriculture, with with Tennessee Farmers Cooperative. How are we going to uh, educate this next group? And and I think one of the so I'm seeing two things happening at uh, across the Institute that I'm excited about is um we are doing, our faculty are doing an incredible job of outreach, whether it's with uh, the students in Future Farmers of America or whether 4-H and getting him here, getting them here on campus, whether it's 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 uh, having a competition where they're looking at, at different meat cuts uh, over mm -hmm. the summer, uh, but also uh, food science uh, programs over the summer, the livestock camp that we mm -hmm. host here, the overnight. And I think for so many of Tennessee students, and I was one of them, I was the first generation. My mom uh, and my grandparents didn't go to college. Um, I, it, but I had confidence issues. C could I go? I wanted to go as I thought I needed college degree to be successful. But I think there's a lot of students out there um, where we have a cultural issue of, of, of can I do it and what I want to do. And I think the outreach that we do, uh, that, that you all do annually into these groups to get people here, get them in a lab, get them with a faculty member and realize, you know what, this isn't scary at all. I can I can do this. And I think that's something we need to continue to do. Um, I would like to start a summer institute here, uh, similar to a governor school program. Mm -hmm. But but getting, uh, you know, eighth and ninth graders here on campus, having them here for about three weeks and letting them see a cross section of what you could do in agricultural and natural resources. We've got the perfect backdrop here. Uh, we've got just about everything you could plant and grow mm -hmm. uh, um, or, or, or tend to in a field here. We've also got the backdrop of the Smoky Mountains and we've got Lake Loudon. So let's 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 make it 
a fun three weeks. And, and that's something I would like to see grow out of the strategic plan and getting more because we've got to get to students when they're in eighth and ninth grade and, 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 and attract them. You've got traditional students who know about farming, but you've got those that don't know what you can do, but they like to be outside. They like plants. They're interested in what they eat. Uh, so that's something. I think the other piece um, is we've got to figure out a way to better market our programs and a lot of times uh when i'm out talking with uh if i'm in, I'm in chattanooga or memphis or or nashville or even even here with a group of high school principals here and you talk about agriculture immediately you get so many people think oh well, you know what that's that's farming and, mm -hmm. and and i don't come from a farm i can't do that but when we start talking about it in terms of of animal science plant science, food science, natural resources, outdoors, um, biosystems engineering, construction science, then all of a sudden you get students that think, oh, and, and then then my own son's 18 is apply, you know applied to UT and 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 he loves land and he loves land and we've got my my in-laws have farmland back in West Tennessee and um, you know he's figured out, you know, I'm going to go and study agricultural economics and, mm -hmm. and I, you know, and so I'm going to do something with land use. I don't know what that looks like, but, but I think we've got to expose, but it's marketing, you know, it's, it's digital ads, whatever we can do to show, Hey, you care about what you eat, come study with us. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we've got to talk about it differently, but we, the folks that are in agriculture are, are such fierce advocates and great advocates. We've got to do, we've got to get, We've got to get some of these suburban uh, families more excited about. Yeah, sometimes I have that feeling that they uh, not everyone know what you can do if you go through an animal science course, I, I, or if you go through a plant exactly, science course. That's right? exactly right. You can exactly open right. a window and have a bunch of different options outside that we are not seeing from here. So you, you're exactly share right. it with our community. I think it's it's really important. You just mentioned eighth and ninth grade. I, I have an eighth grade at home. Yeah. And she she keeps saying, well, I need to figure out what I'm going to do. Right. Mm -hmm. And and she will ask like, oh, I need to be A, B or C. I said, no, you have several other careers ahead of you that you may not see at this point yet. So mm -hmm. I would love the idea to have a agriculture camping here and share with them the possibilities you have to go through University of Tennessee and, and and have a career that can lead you to a different place. Think about um, an eighth or ninth grader spending spending the morning, spending the morning morning out doing something, canoeing, um, looking at looking at a, the, the FIFA plot, uh, out with animals, horses, mm -hmm. cows, mm -hmm. learning about them. Mm -hmm. But then in the afternoon, having some high level lectures and, mm -hmm. and interactions because. It's hot in July and in, in yeah. but but uh, June and July, but but having them inside and then at night have some. So I mean, that would be exciting. And that those are the type of things we can do here. And I think that'll continue to to help get students and add to our our 2000 that we have studying agriculture here right now. I think we can we can really grow. And it's grown eight percent the last two years on enrollment. So I, I think it's uh, ag's hot. And um, anyway, we got to keep it cool. It's, it's hot, but we got to keep, <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah. keep it cool. Yeah, got to keep it cool. No, so so Keith, I, I love yeah. your your vision for these things, right? And hearing you talk about the the summer institute and mm -hmm. other things like that, that I can tell the the energy and passion you've got there. If if you can sort of project forward, what are some of the other initiatives, programs, things that you could see really bringing UTIA up um, even more? I think we're in a really great place now, um, but. Uh, Chancellor Plowman talks all the time about UT being a, an University institute on the rise. rise. Yeah. Um, so, so how is a, an ag institute, the UCS is an ag institute on the rise. What are some of the, the areas, programs, um, thoughts that you could see us investing in and, and really growing out into the future? You know, we talked about those areas. We could be, we could be great. We could be, we're already great, but we could be excellent earlier. Yeah. Um, I think if we continue to deliver the research, the educational opportunities, uh, the, the, the outreach to extension, uh, great learning experiences uh, for our students. Um, I think if we can deliver on those things, I think the investments from the state mm. and the federal government and from our donors will will follow. And right. uh, I don't want to wait until we have the money. Let's do these things mm -hmm. in, in a big way, in a good way, and then bring partners along the way. And so I guess the simple answer is let's amplify all the efforts we're doing uh, and not 
not to beat our chest or to say, look at me, but let's, let's really show the, the Tennessee Department of Agriculture, our elected officials, our, our, our producers, our commodity groups across the state, our governor, that we really care mm-hmm. about feeding mm-hmm. the state. We really care about making farming more efficient. We really care about healthier babies. And, and let's do these things and then ask for, ask for investment so mm-hmm. that we can make these things greater. I, I think the, the, the mantra I like to say around the office, is why not us? Mm. Uh, and, and why not us? We've got we've got everything we need. Um, we have an incredible faculty. You guys know your your colleagues are great, but we need more. And yeah. so let's build these programs up. And as we have growth, let's let's add to your number with great researchers, great extension specialists, great uh, great lecturers, even uh, from the profession mm-hmm. that can come in and teach our students. Final thing I'll say is uh, I also want. And, and you mentioned earlier about students. I just I just love. I love students. I, uh, I love students, <laughs> but, but I, but I, um, you know, I think, um, I also want to provide, uh, a, a, we would need to have a great working environment for our faculty and staff. Mm-hmm. And when you have a great learning environment for our students and, and you can't get those out of whack. Yeah. If you've got happy and supportive faculty, they're going to pour into those students. If you've got happy students, um, that's going to help your recruiting. It's going to help their philanthropic giving after they right. graduate uh, and it's all cyclical but but finding ways to make things better mm-hmm. uh, improve morale uh, make folks feel not just resourced but mm-hmm. but appreciated yeah you have built the process right? mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah mm-hmm. no that's that's great 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 um, I'm very glad that we we had a chance to be here with you and talk a little bit about those things uh, I to wrap up our today's live stream I would like to go in the rapid fire with you. Okay, <laughs> let's okay. try this. Okay, the people that are you know watching us today, they they like to know more about you personally. Okay, and we cannot okay. lose that. We cannot miss that chance, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, few words only. Okay, a unforgettable experience. Mm-hmm. Last summer, uh, last June, watching my daughter give birth to a baby and bring a grandchild into this world. Uh, in uh, never anything experienced like that it was wonderful, mm-hmm. wonderful. I see a professional dream, a uh, professional dream. You know, um, I, I, I've been all around UT, but I've always been at UT. And uh, I talked earlier about this is the place where you can. We're really focused on mission. Uh, I think I'm here, and and I and I think seeing us grow and better serve our state in the ways we talked about. If we can do that together, that'll be what I think would be could be the greatest achievement as a team. Mm-hmm. But um, I think I'm here. I, I love it. Great. Yeah. How about the hobby? Hobby. You know, uh, I, I like to smoke meat. So I've got a big, <laughs> got a, got a big green egg. That's love good. smoke meat. And we also, we love to get out on the water. We're, we're avid skiers and good, good, good. Uh, wakeboarders. And so we like to, we like to do that. We have a smoke school coming. Yes, yeah, smoking school coming up. Right? Yeah, pretty, yeah. pretty exciting. Went last year, oh, yeah. going back this year. Uh, now, I've not been invited to cook anything. So that probably is uh, indicative of my quality <laughs> products. But anyway. We need anyway. to fix it, Dad. That's exactly right. <laughs> a favorite food. You know, uh, I like, and our family likes, we like to do homemade gourmet pizzas. Mm. Huh. Interesting. So throw a little filet on there. Uh, try some, try some um, pineapple in there yeah. with the filet. So pineapple does go on pizza. It does. Okay. All right. Pineapple That's interesting. Pizza. Pineapple goes on pizza. But but homemade, <laughs> homemade crust, great quality meat, and uh, it's fun. It's fun. Awesome. Seven-minute pizzas. I love it. Favorite place? You know, I... I would say probably uh, love Neyland Stadium on Saturdays. My oh, son, uh, my that. son's, my son's a member of the football team, and and like watching him. So that's fun, uh, fun atmosphere. I'd say a close number two would be Kentucky Lake. Mm. Loved loved to fish and um, love lots of good child, childhood memories there on the lake. A book, a series. Uh, you know, uh, so right now I, I'm reading. Uh, right now I'm reading a, a book called Storyteller, and it's the uh, biography of Dave Grohl, the lead singer for oh, Foo yeah. Fighters. Okay. It's a fantastic book. Uh, I read a couple books at once, and I'm also committed to read a biography on every American president. And uh-huh. uh, I'm up to Jimmy Carter, and so I'm reading uh, Adler's Adler's work on him in, in 2021, and it's it's really it's sad, but it's it's good. Uh, mm. But uh, some of those biographies are a little more interesting than others. I'll just say, yeah. So I'll be glad when I get these done. You know? 
awesome. Dr. Carver, again, thanks thanks for joining us yeah, today in this first bet. livestock. Uh, it's it's a really pleasure to be you here to have you here with the Beef and Forage Center with Dr. Mason and Dr. Rowan. Uh, well, I hope you all can join us for the next one. It will be on March 30, uh, 13th at 2 p.m. Eastern, Eastern Time. That's when we are going to be here for another Beef and Forge conversation. Hope to see you guys here. And if you have if you have any any comments for us and any question, please uh, leave it in our YouTube channel. We'll be glad to try to answer them. And again, thank you. Thank you so much, guys. And thanks for what you do for for UT. I like to say every day is Ag Day at the University of Tennessee. There you go. That's right. Good. If you have any beef, oh, uh, if you have any beef for us to discuss, <laughs> let us know. <laughs> Thank you, guys. See you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good deal.